Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 20th. First up, this was sent in by my friend Dave Nicholson. This is kind of an optimistic, I would call it, proposal of what someone thinks the iPhone 6 might possibly be. It's got two little wings on the top and bottom which use projectors to project a keyboard for the user to use and then it projects a screen on the back onto some flat surface, I guess a wall or something. I could see this eventually being something in the future, maybe an iPhone 7, 8 or 9 because the basic technologies I've seen them being used but as far as them all coming together on the very next release of the iPhone I don't see it happening yet but still a, a nice preview of something that could be taking place soon. Next up, this one is uh, for those of you like me that still like Windows XP and still use it on at least one machine. I'm still very satisfied with the operating system. I think it's rock stable. Well, we have approximately one year to go as of April 8th, 2014. That's when support is going to come to an end. Now, I don't think that necessarily still means the end of Windows XP. I, I will probably be for at least another year or two beyond that, if not longer, still using Windows XP. And as a matter of fact, I don't tend to do weekly updates. I do the service pack updates, but I think you'll still be good as long as you win. As long as you run a very good quality antivirus software, keep your browser up to date, and just be cautious on the web, I think we'll be fine for years to come. It's, uh, you know, just a matter of also, the, just for safety's sake, keep an image if you can. If you know what Norton Ghost or Acronis Image is, um, make an image of your machine when it's set up the way you want everything's clean everything has just been installed and keep that back and then no matter what happens to your machine if it gets compromised a virus or anything like that you basically you just wipe it put the image on and start over again or you always have the option of doing a clean install it's probably a good idea every year or so if not um, at the very least probably after two years it would be a good idea just to install everything from scratch I think it just makes the machine run better so I think Windows XP still has a lot of lifetime left in it next up um, this is space launch system is ahead of schedule and on budget the new space launch system is um, doing pretty well the preliminary um, testing and everything like that is going absolutely fine it is uh, well let me look here it's uh, it's made to launch the astronauts beyond low Earth orbit and deep space asteroids and Mars. As a matter of fact, the uh, flights are going to start, the, the test flights are going to start in 2017, but the first manned flight isn't going to be till 2021. Um, they still haven't even finished the development on the Orion capsule. Now, this first initial one, and this is on, uh, let me give you the link, and as usual, all the links will be down below. This is from Science on NBC News. And, uh, uh, the, fir the very first test designs are going to use some solid boosters, but they're even saying in this article that this is not the final design because the system they're setting up to use now will not be capable of launching the heaviest payloads that they could possibly want to uh, launch. And that leads me into another article, too, that I found at about the same time that kind of answers the question because I was asking, well, if this initial design isn't going to launch the heavy payloads, such as sending a crew on the Orion capsule to uh, back to the moon or even on to Mars, um, what are they actually working on? And here is a nice article here from Ars Technica, and they're actually taking the old F1 engine. Now, if you're not familiar with it, that was the engine designed in the 60s and the engine that uh, took us to the moon that was in the Saturn V launch system. They're actually taking some of those out of storage and they're letting young engineers run some testing, take them apart, examine them, um, do all kinds of things with them. So to me, um, if you're getting a bunch of engineers familiar with that design, I think that's something that they're looking at for the future for the final um, launch system to be able to take astronauts to the Mars and you know below Earth orbit. One interesting thing about this, now people have claimed that NASA has lost all the design prints and everything like that. Absolutely not true. There are stacks and stacks and stacks of paperwork, almost every scrap and notation. These F1 engines were uh, pretty much hand-built and each one had its own individual quirk. So there was even uh, design notations about each individual engine. And even as of this day, this is still the most powerful single nozzle engine ever built in the history of space travel. Now the Soviets have some engines that are more powerful, but they're a little bit different design. But the real main thing with this is these young engineers are going to have to do a reverse design on this. And what they're going to have to do is they've actually hired a firm to scan. Now, let's see if I got the name of this firm here. It's called Shape Fidelity that is going to actually scan the parts as they take it apart and examine these F1 rockets and are going to change them 
from paper design to actually get them into scan designs on the computer so that they can actually work back again because you got to figure back then if they had to do tests and trials on a rocket engine or something like that they basically had to come up with the drawings they had to actually build something maybe by hand in fact probably most of the parts were by hand test it out if it didn't work you tossed it out there was no such thing as testing it on a computer and running a simulation that can tell you well don't waste your time in this area so I think by reverse engineering these and getting them into the computer and running the tests the preliminary tests especially they can make these things a little bit more efficient as far as producing them and any changes in designs they can run a computer test first and not spend a heck of a lot of money making parts and testing things and then you know possibly having them not work out so I'm looking forward to that to seeing an old design similar if not the exact F1 but a design very similar to the F1 flying again because that was something my father worked on in the uh, he worked well he didn't work on the engines he worked on another part but that was during the the era of the NASA engineers working on things like this so he was very even though he didn't work on he was very familiar with it and as a child he uh, even talked to me a little bit about it and next up this is from 1954 shadow this is 30 pages of cheap gadgets and gizmos I mean this one is like page after page after page. As you scroll down, uh, it keeps adding more pages. It might even be more of like 50 pages or more. I didn't uh, uh, get to the end of it for a long, long ways. I kept scrolling down, and it starts from the cheapest gadgets first all the way to the most expensive gadgets. They've got some weird stuff in there. They've got everything glow-in-the-dark toilet paper, the dust mop slippers, and um, shot glasses where you can make an ice cube into a shot glass, all kinds of things like that, and all ranges of affordability. The more you scroll down, the more the prices go up, but there's still plenty of stuff in the 5 to $10 range to, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, geek out on or amuse your friends as gifts or gag gifts or stuff like that. It's, it's a really cool website, so if you get a chance to check it out, this is I'll take 10.com and next up this is from my buddy Brightex Lonnie he has come up with a gadget himself that he kind of put together and built of his own design I want you to check this out and see what you think of it making this bracket and attaching it to the softball And I attach them to this piece of scrap wood. I'm trying to prove a concept. Take a helmet, put it on there. Take another helmet, put it on there. And I have a helmet mount. Cheap, inexpensive. So anyway guys, uh, I showed you my last video how I made these things and this is kind of the finished product of what I've done. I used to like these little white softballs, well these softballs that were white and you can't find them anymore so uh, all I could really find uh, were orange softballs and so I just decided to go ahead and paint them with this, uh, this uh, hammer paint. Uh, hammered look paint, hammered metal paint. So this is what the semi-finished product will look like. I've got to find some more softballs, uh, preferably two, of, four more, four more softballs. I've got enough rod to finish these. So and I painted the boards that I mounted them to, uh, hammered paint, but I also kind of distressed them a little bit. So that's kind of what it'll look like. So then I'll have uh, a total of six spots, one here, one there, one there, and one there. Uh, so I'll have six spots for six helmets. And um, 
you could take and you can either nail it to the wall like this or what I'm going to plan on doing is I've made some some square brackets out of this same kind of metal and put a hole in it and put a groove in it and I would show you but these this is still wet paint so uh, but I put a groove in it and I'm just gonna do like you would with a put a wall anchor with a screw hanging put a wall anchor with a screw hanging out and then you just hang these up on that wall anchor so anyway that's the plan now that's hammered thanks everybody for watching catch you guys next week